I'm Pat Kahn. We're playing Skyrim, and we just finished off our 50th, uh, 50th, um, or no, this is our 50th uh, chapter. It looks like Jazargo is still keeping fit. And he does not seem to want to stop running. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is... In this episode, we're going to go and visit the leader of Deepwood Redoubt, which I believe is a bandit, ca a bandit camp a little bit southwest of here. And then we're going to head east to Dragon Bridge. So, southwest first. And I believe that that quest marker up there that is outdoors is our destination. What time is it? Oh. It is time to meet some... <clears throat> so that is one of the things that you'll... Uh, You'll definitely enjoy when you... Oh, looks like it's due west now, so maybe I got the uh, location wrong. When you have a good companion uh, along with you, frequently, by the time you're ready for battle, you'll have already killed whatever it is uh, that you would be fighting. So, let's see. Where are we now? It is just a little bit southwest of us, I think. Maybe. <clears throat> Let's try now. Southwest. Huh. Yeah, so the compass, as wonderful as it is for um, helping you find stuff, sometimes it doesn't have a perfect uh, correspondence with with the uh, larger map. The upside, I guess, due south is where we're going. Maybe it corresponds with that cave marker up there. So I will s carefully... Let's see. It's practically right on top of us, but it's... It, okay, it's a bit west. So... See if I can manage to make it there without sliding all the way down the mountain. At least we have some nice music to listen to and very pretty scenery. So I'm wondering if we're actually at a point of diminishing returns with video games where we no longer um, get huge benefits from increasing the visual f uh, fidelity. I suppose we'll find out as they continue to improve, but yeah, still due west, so we'll definitely want to go this way. If we can make it up here. Of course, there's still a little bit of, uh, of work to do on the faces, and there's work to do on uh, the smoothness in general. Okay, there's Deepwood Redoubt. I think we were asked to do what here? the leader. Okay, that suggests that these guys are not going to be friendly, so let's muffle and weapon up. These are probably bandits. I'm not sure if this is an indoor or outdoor thing. It's probably an outdoor thing, actually. Or an uh, indoor thing, rather. But... There is the Forsworn, who did not seem to quite... Oh. Now 
unfortunately. You've already lost. Have I? Let's uh, pull out our shield. Um, where is my shield? Maybe I'll call someone a frost astronaut instead. And then I'll bring out my shield. Do I not? Oh, I guess I didn't put my new shield in my uh, quick access marker. So let's take. So these guys actually have t uh, two weapons. You you can choose to do things that way. And I guess we'll let we'll let the uh, my Atronach go take care of that. And we are still gonna we are still going to uh, keep gathering. Uh, Oh. Do not want Jizargo being killed by these guys. Oh. Huh. You okay? Good. <clears throat> so, wielding two one handed weapons is a definite option in the game. Just as much an option as wielding one two-handed weapon. I've decided to go with uh, the sword and shield. Where is... I didn't finish the quest. No, it's actually behind me somewhere. Interesting. So yeah, this is an indoor quest, but... Aha! And they've made a neat um, carved totem spirit thing there. Let's head inside. And my frost atronach is blocking me. Well, it ran out of summon time in the most fortuitous moment. Huh. Oh, yeah, so I was... Um, a vampire managed to infect me with... Uh, with vampirism a few dungeons back. Okay, so this looks like a nasty trap. There's a chest, but there are a bunch of holes, and I'm imagining spikes will shoot out if I uh, open the chest. So let's break the trap and then open the chest. I can't imagine why they would find that convenient unless they don't need to access the, uh, the chest very often. This is a pretty neat lair. Oh, it looks like there are a lot of Forsworn here. Yeah, so these are the natives of this particular area that, that are kind of a third side in the Civil War between uh, the Empire and uh, the Stormcloaks. And I kind of sympathize with them, but they're at times kind of nasty and disgusting dudes. I was just hearing yes, you were just hearing things. It would be great if uh, if Bethesda released DLC that would let you explore their, uh, their faction. I wonder if I can lure him, lure that guy to to come and run through here, because that would be pretty amazing. 
Yeah, someone's here. Yeah, apparently he's not gonna do it in a way that kills him. Okay, and then I will pull the lever. So, uh, they did decide to be nice enough not to make any of those long, uh, okay, so that is a trap. You would think that such a loud shout would bring everybody in the whole, uh, whole area at me, but not so much. There is a red dot up there. But not even my arrows are provoking them enough, so... Okay, just a little bit to the right. I lucked out. The nice thing about master locks is that, that uh, they're complex enough that you almost always gain a full level in lock picking whenever you open one. Oh, not quite this time, though. This looks like a particularly nasty trap of one of those spinny spike walls. And I am worried that Jazargo is going to trigger it as soon as I run by, so I'm going to hop over this and sprint past. Ow, Jazargo! On the upside, I'm glad it didn't kill him. There's another Forsworn right up there. No, Jazargo, do you have to? Okay. Okay, that is how that is done. Mm. Armor, headdress. A lot of the Forsworn um, gear is actually nice enough that it's worth uh, grabbing. Like, you'll notice um, there are things that have a weight value efficiency of greater than 10. Some of them, uh, some of them are, are actually have an efficiency of 20. And like any other enemy, the type of, or well, like many other enemies rather, the type of force one that you encounter will be level dependent. Now the Forsworn, um, they have a relationship with an enemy that we haven't seen much or any of in the game yet, uh, Hag Ravens, who are not, they're kind of like uh, harpies from, from myth, uh, bird woman, but these are more, these are not quite, uh, they're less birds than the classical harpy. Oh, is this really where we're going? Wow. It's involved. Kill the leader of Deepwood Redoubt. That is a good ways forward. I wasn't expecting this to be such an involved uh, side quest. Oh well, it's fun. And I figure if you're playing uh, Skyrim right... Okay, so I see... Some archers over there. And Jazargo is not gonna just let this let this go. He is going to make sure that we get into full combat here. And I'm seeing arrows swinging by. And I do want to keep moving. because I do not want me and my companion to die here. And Jusargo really needs to be careful not to get in, in my way when I'm shooting arrows. Oh, nice shot. It's 
snowberries. I wonder. Interesting. I don't think I've been down here before. I guess I'm not collecting Nernrid anymore, but it certainly doesn't uh, hurt. So the handling of um, of water flow is one of those things that video games frequently get wrong. Like it's uh, it's not not that easy to make compellingly interesting landscapes where the water flows in a way that would be at all natural. Skyrim does a decent job, but it still has uh, water disappearing under the ground. Okay, so it's a little bit to the right in ways that are occasionally implausible. Okay, let's see. Just short of the end of that white streak that's part way up. Let's try at the end of the white streak. Uh, that's a little bit better. Let's see if I can go a little bit beyond the end of the white streak. No. So it's right at the end of this white streak. Yeah, it is a very fiddly thing. I'm trying to get get exactly the... Oh, sweet, level up. So what am I going to take? So I, I do seem to be at the uh, stage of vampirism where I'm not yet a full vampire, but I am taking uh, added damage from uh, from the sun. I think I'm done with enchanting. I can't yet take uh, the end smithing. I could improve my no. Well, can't do anything that interesting with block yet. I could improve one-handed or archery. Or I could definitely do some armor. There are some pretty decent perks along that line. Um, sneak could be useful. Actually, yeah, sneak attacks with bows improve damage for that. That's pretty useful for me because I do a lot of sneak attack with bows, so I'll take that perk. So this here uh, was an optional, and just because I took some perks, I'm going to save the game, because I do not like needing to remember what perks I took, or figuring that out again. Wait, was there a chest in here? No chests that look like they're unlockable. Okay, so we will proceed onwards. Yeah, the, so the things I don't like about Forsworn are that they have that weird, uh, oh, that's where it is. Is that they have a weird nature worshipping thing that, that involves them doing lots of animal sacrifice. And that is kind of nasty. So they are barbarians, but but there is a, a, a storyline that you can go through in Markarth that makes you feel a little bit sympathetic for them, a little bit. I mean, I guess that's the thing with war. Everybody has a compelling story. They're, they're all human stories. People do terrible things to each other in war, and everybody just wants wants freedom and happiness and all that other fun stuff. The problem is that freedom is such a loaded word because it fre frequently brings into it notions of freedom on my terms, uh, freedom of my people to control a bit of land and be douches to anybody else who wants it. And uh, when you say, uh, when a People say, I just want to be left alone and stuff like that. 
So that's a Briarheart. Those are the guys I mentioned where if you sneak up behind them, you can steal a Briarheart out of their bodies that replace their real heart. New spell for me. But yeah, freedom, it, it just... It's a great propagandic word because people never really think a lot about what it what it means to have the kinds of freedoms that people are always asking for. And Hag's End. I think this is actually a dungeon that we could do. I don't think we have a reason to do it. But we do happen to be at its front door and it's kind of hard to reach. So let's run through it. Hmm. Not sure why they would use those fences to mark off an area unless they either have blind people that, that they don't want stumbling, or that's meant to denote a junkyard. There's a hag raven up there. Let's see if we can... Yeah, I took it out immediately, which saved me a lot of trouble, because otherwise I think it, it was trying to, uh, to summon something. Unfortunately, that character ran off and is probably activating some traps. Now they are back. Oh, stop standing in my way. I do not see who is firing at us. Well, let's see if there's anything interesting in here. So, alchemy thing. Yeah, these guys really have weird taste. No. Potions of ultimate healing. They are pretty great. They heal you all the way up, just like po potions of ultimate magicka uh, heal you all the way up. I'm not sure where the Hag Raven went, unless I didn't actually manage to kill her with that. With that arrow. Stairs lead up the, here. This looks like a trap. And that looks like another trap, actually. Are there more traps in this room? I don't see any more. Yeah, this is a most unexciting room. Actually, I wonder if I can... Well, no. I guess I don't need to, to deal with that trap. I'll leave it be. <clears throat> uh, that looks like a tra another trap. Jazargo will probably spring it. So, let's... Uh, Huh, I'm getting sudden slowdown. Maybe, and I'm hearing a word wall somewhere. I'm getting a lot more slowdown. So, can I wait this out? Nope, very well, maybe. No, probably with slowdown it's best to uh, to restart. I'll, uh, I'm going to stop here. I will see you in the next uh, Let's Play.